Hey guys. Um, I figured I was due for a little life update because uh, so much has kind of happened recently. Um, also, slightly a little bit of a uh, rant and trying to get my, my process on trying to be patient and, um, you know, understand that things are not always going to go the way that I plan them to, but things, I am a firm believer that things do work out. Things happen for a reason. Now, that's not to say that if you just sit on your ass all the time, that things are just going to happen for you and everything's going to be fine. You have to make things happen, but I do genuinely believe that things happen for a reason. Um, so I'm going to start with, I finally got a job. Um, and not only did I get a job, I got the job that I wanted. I got the job that I have been really, really, really looking forward to. Um, and something that can actually, you know, kickstart a future career. Um, I, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Um, about a month and a half ago, I heard about this employment program in my city. Um, it was a paid employment program and it was like workshop. So it was school. It was three, uh, three days a week for three weeks. Um, you know, eight, 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Uh, so it was like school for nine classes, basically. Um, and it was all about, like, you know, how to do a resume cover letter, interview skills, uh, on-the-job basic training. We did, like, WIMIS and, and all that stuff um, as well. And so I heard about this program, and I went for it. Um, there are a lot of employment programs in my city and I've looked at a few of them over the years and I just didn't click with any, like I didn't, I never took the step to actually go and sign up for them. Um, and there was always some reason why I convinced myself not to. And this one, I decided I'm just going to go for it and I went for it and I'm so glad I did. Um, I learned so much and my confidence around these things was boosted significantly. Um, I've done interviews before, I've handed out resumes before, I've been doing it for years, and never really had anything come of it. Um, I was always super nervous and I just did not conduct myself well because I'd never been really taught how to. Um, I was always just kind of caught off guard and also I had no, I, in my life, my entire life, I have lacked motivation and drive. I, and goals. Um, apart from my transition, which is literally the only thing I've ever want, like physically transitioning that I, that I wanted to happen and I made it happen. Um, other than that, I've never had anything I wanted to do in my life. Um, I'm not a very driven person, um, which is unfortunate. It's something that I really, you know, want to change. Um, I just never had anything I wanted to do. And so I've been in kind of this limbo spot since I graduated high school a couple of years ago um, because I don't want to go to college or university. I have no plans to um, in the near future. And then I also had no idea what I, where I wanted to work. So even though I was having these interviews and stuff, I had no um, direction I wanted to be heading in. And that clearly showed in the interviews that I didn't care about the companies, that I didn't, you know, care. Like, I wanted to work because it's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be a, a contributing member of society. You work, you make money, you pay bills, whatever. That's what you're supposed to do. And I never had anything I wanted to do, so I wasn't driven enough to make those things happen. Anyway, this program that I did helped me kind of narrow my focus and realize, okay, all of these skills that I've been um, building up over the past few years volunteering, because I've been volunteering for four years, almost five years now, and um, all of these skills that I've been building up, volunteering, can go towards a job. And it's not that I didn't know that before, it's just I didn't know where to go with it. And so I, my confidence was boosted significantly by practicing interview skills and practicing all of these things in this program. Um, I was able to get this job that I really, really wanted. Um, and I have a lot of connections because I've been volunteering so long. Um, I volunteer for my city, so I have connections with the city. So now I have a job with the city, which is what I've wanted for a while, but never really acknowledged that, I guess, and went for it. Um, like 110% went for it. Um, and I did this time. The position that I wanted opened up, and I had these connections, and I had this experience, and I 
went for it, went into the interview, was not nervous at all. That is the first interview that I've not been nervous at all and didn't have to think about anything because everything was literally just coming from a passionate and, and genuine place of, I want to work here. Um, and I got the job. So I'm really, really happy. Um, yeah, I, I've done one shift. I have a few more shadowing shifts of, uh, cause it's a, it's a individual position. So like, um, I will, I will be working alone. Um, so right now I'm shadowing, um, someone else and then I will start working by myself. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really happy. Um, and that's good. And it's, good that this happened at the same time that I got really, really horrible news. Um, I made a video about the whole um, bottom surgery prior approval form thing and that whole debacle that I went through to get access to those forms. Um, so I sent those forms to my doctor almost two months ago, I think. And they're like, oh yeah, we'll fill them out by the end of the week and we'll have them sent out and it'll be all good. And so I assumed that those forms had been sent to the government almost two months ago. And I've been waiting for a response from the government to tell me whether or not my bottom surgery is going to be covered. And I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And I got a call about two days ago saying, um, oh, by the way, uh, the doctor isn't qualified to fill these forms out. And, um, you know, so you need to figure it out. Um, they actually weren't even calling about that. They were calling about something else. And I happened to ask, I said, so, uh, can I have an update on the forms? Like when were they sent to the government, whatever? And they said, oh no, we have them here. Um, she can't fill them out for you. She's not qualified to, so you're going to need to find two other doctors who can do it. Um, and she, I was like, okay, um, did you send them to my other doctor? Like I, like you were supposed to two months ago. And they're like, oh no, those haven't been sent to him either. And I was like, can you do that, please? Because he's been waiting for those forms so he can fill out his part of the forms. So not only can she not fill it out, which is out of her control, I figured she wasn't going to be able to fill it out. And I told them she wasn't going to be able to. And they're like, no, 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 she, she can fill them out. And so, you know, not only did they not listen to me and then not tell me about it immediately. They also didn't do the second part of the exercise, which was to send the forms to my endocrinologist so he can fill out his part. So the forms have literally just been sitting in my doctor's office for two months doing nothing, like absolutely nothing. And so here I am thinking they've been sent off and they're probably already processed by the government and I'm getting a response soon. And I find out, no, they literally just have been sitting there for almost two months and they decided to just call and I happened to ask about them. Um, yeah, so I was pretty livid because I understand she's not qualified to fill them out, so she can't fill them out. That's fine. But tell me, let me know, because I was told they'd be sent out by the end of the week. And so that really upset me because I've been waiting for these the, the response. And now I find out that they're not even sent. And not only have they not sent, but now it's going to take me forever to find more doctors who can actually fill them out. So these past two months have just been another month of waste of time because they already wasted my time by not telling me that they didn't have the forms in the first place. So it's been like three months now of them just not telling me what's going on and just assuming that the forms sitting in the office there is actually helping me at all, which spoiler alert, it isn't. Um, yeah. So the secretary was like, yeah, she can't fill them out. I'm sure you'll be able to find someone who can though. Good luck was what she said. Um, she's like, I'm sure you'll handle it. And I was like, okay, I'm like, I guess I can, but it would have been nice if you had told me that two months ago, not now, because these past two months could have been spent finding people who can. And it just, I don't know. I'm really glad that I am not super dysphoric right now about my genitals, because if I was, that would have been devastating. I was angry and I'm still angry. Um, but that would have been absolutely devastating to hear that they had not even sent them out yet. I'm trying to be calm. Um, the fact that I have a job now and that's like 
really good news coupled with this terrible news is helping me deal with it better because um, I'm comparing the two situations of, okay, all of these job rejections I've had in the past few years while applying for jobs has led me to this moment where I now have the job that I really, 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 really wanted. Um, and that's really going to help me in my future. Um, so all of these setbacks that I've had to deal with with trying to get this freaking bottom surgery approved, hopefully will be for a reason in the future. Um, you know, it's going to take years before I have bottom surgery. I know that the waiting list is so long and it's frustrating that, you know, every day that these forms are not sent in is another day that I'm not, that I'm pushing this stuff back and I'm trying to just enjoy the moment right now and, you know, deal with this situation. I am looking up doctors who can do it and trying to find anybody who can help me, but I'm not letting it control me the way that I have in the past. Um, yeah. If you're in Southern Ontario and you know of any doctors who are qualified to diagnose gender dysphoria, um, please just send me their name. Like you don't need to know specifically where I'm located, but like anywhere in Southern Ontario, just, just send me their name, psychiatrists, psychologists, doctors, whatever. I don't care. Anybody who's qualified to diagnose gender dysphoria can fill out those forms. Um, I just, I would like some names so that I can send them to my doctor and be like, I need you to refer me here because these people can help me. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm a little frustrated, but I'm trying to think of the bigger picture and that it will happen eventually. It's going to take a long time, but I'm going to be as patient as I can be and it will all work out in the end as long as I keep working towards it. Um, yeah, so there's my little update. Thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, comments, video topics, or names of doctors or anything, please leave them down below or message me. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.